Welcome back to Hammer's Garage. Glad to see you. Thanks for coming. In this video, we're going to completely rebuild Winston's front suspension and steering. And it needs it. We got to get you up on jack stands. Seems safe, right? Well, let's find out. Oh yeah, perfectly safe. But just in case, I'm gonna add a couple back here. Step one, get the wheels off. It's every time these get stuck. I don't understand it. Oops, wrong way. <laughs> Lug nuts are garbage. Well, we're going to start by getting these brake lines disconnected. Put this down here just to kind of protect my freshly painted steering column. Just wedge under there somehow. There we go. Nine sixteenth twenty. You know, if you have an open cut, brake fluid burns. Just sharing that with you. Well, that was exciting. I had a buddy of mine turn me on to these a long time ago, these line wrenches. And I remember telling him they're crap. Well, guess what? They're awesome. I got done what I needed to get done under here. All right, so first thing we're going to do under here while this is fully extended is remove the shock. I got my baby impact here. I call it my baby impact because well, it's little and it's my baby. Baby brings the fire. The next thing we're going to do here is get the sway bar off. Let's see if... This will do it here. Oh, well, you got to get on there. Stupid. Now we're going to take the tie rod end off. I bet I shot that halfway across the yard. I'm going to pound it out here. Normally you wouldn't do that, but I'm not reusing these. There we go. We're going to take some pressure off of this control arm assembly here. Come on out. I mean, for Pete's sake. Ow! Took some skin off my thumb. That's all right. I don't need that many layers anyway. Okay. Let's get this stinking cotter pin out. Just a little cooperation, really, is all I'm looking for here. I just, you know, keep taking it out a millimeter at a time, because that's how cotter's pens are supposed to come out. A millimeter at a time. Oh, yay. Okay, we're not going to take this completely off, because I don't know how much tension is on it with this spring. And really, the right thing to do is put a spring compressor on it. But, I think I'm going to take that ill-advised approach. Let's see what we get.
There it goes. The only thing holding everything together right now is this one nut. It's always a mystery. You know, it's very suspenseful. There we go. That was less than dramatic, huh? Well, now here comes the part that's fun. I'm going to let this down nice and easy. Get all the pressure's off. Hello. All right, now that we've popped the spring out, we're going to get the shock. The control arms, sway bar, tie rod ends, everything out of here. And this is either bourbon or Kool-Aid. You decide. Baby impact. Get off of there. There we go. The upper control arm should come off with just these two right here. That's not going to do it. James, I need senior. You're coming off or else. There we go. So what I want to do here with these is I'm going to get a measurement of what was on each side. Now, when it goes to get an alignment, they'll measure and they'll put in what they need. But since these were in there, we know that if I go back with this same amount when I install the new upper control arm, I'll probably be close. Now to get the lower control arm off, I'm going to have to go to the other side of the frame rail with Senior, you're coming off or else. This is going to come down with thunderous applause. I'm going to hit these studs with a little uh, peanut butter. Peanut butter. Butter, butter. Here we go. Good times. Well, that was exciting. Oh, now I'm going to get this tie rod off of here. There we go. A little more. Okay. Now we need to get our center link and our Pittman arm off. And then over there, the idler arm. Because we're going to replace all of that. Here we go. Well, yay. This cotter pin was put on correctly. So maybe it won't be so hard to get out. A pick has seen better days. I'm not reusing these. So here we go. one way to do it. This we can freshen up. Refreshed. Now this Pittman arm we can go ahead and replace. I did this not long ago so it shouldn't be real hard. We're going to have to get the puller. I'll make sure we don't damage the boot. And hopefully this doesn't take my teeth out. All right I want to note the orientation of it before it comes completely off. And I have this new one that came in the kit from Ride Tech. Boom. I'm gonna put the little cotter pen and grease cert that goes with it up here with some tape so I don't forget it. The boot fell off. So, we gotta take it back off. Got it that time. Well, there you go. 
it's all out. Now just go the other side and do the same thing. All right, look here. Let me share a little something with y'all. There will never be a more fortuitous moment to freshen this up than there is right now. SOS pads or Brillo or Coke or Pepsi, whichever. A little bit of clean water and some rags. Itsy bitsy spider. I hate spiders. Die! 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 Wipe this off. Now we'll let this dry and scuff it up. Scuff, scuff, scufferoo. Mrs. Puffin Scuff. Sir Scuffs a lot. Scufferoni. Scuff the magic dragon. What the scuff? Scuffing sucks. Now we wipe it clean. Got this uh, 3M undercoating. Got to shake it like a martini. I put some tape over the holes and paper and stuff because you get this on something, you'll have to chisel it off. Let's get after it. Look at that. All right, this is what we're going back on the truck with. So this is QA1's coilover kit for 73 to 87 C10. Upper and lower control arms, the brackets, the coilover shocks, the whole kit and caboodle there. And then from Ride Tech, we have the uh, inner and outer tie rods, the idler arm and pitman arm, and the billet adjuster sleeves. So... Oof. Guess we better get to work. Let's see how many pages this is. Is this going to be a... What kind of deal do we have here? Oh, pictures. As long as there's pictures, we can get it done. So the instructions say that this bracket here has to come off. And there's four factory rivets. So we are going to air chisel. Here we go. Hold your ears. Whoops. Knock out the rivets. I made that look really easy with them rivets, but I promise you it was not. All right, they want you to set this bracket in place, line it up with these holes, and then mark this big hole here because it's got to get cut out. I'll just mark it like that. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Plasma cutter. Yeah, I think that came out okay. I think before we put this all together, we need to fix this up a little. And by this, I mean this. Yeah, get the scrubbing. Scrub a dub dub. Three supermodels in a tub. <laughs> what did he say? Gonna hit it with this chassis black from Eastwood. It's epoxy fortified for durability. Yeah, I'd say that's an improvement. Muchas betteras. Let's work on putting the steering back together. Idler arm. This is the number here. This came in the kit from Ride Tech. Big end goes in the bracket. There's a big end, a little end. We're going to. A little grease certs that came with it. Just thread into here. Just get you a little five sixteenths and 
running in there. The torque on this is like 65 or 66 foot pounds. So we're going to run it to 60 and then I'll show you why. So if you torque that just short of its spec, then when you go to align your castle nut with the hole in the spindle so you can get your cutter pin through, you'll, you'll be adding the additional torque that you need. Cutter pin's the right way. Long side up, slide it in, leave the ring exposed, bend the long side over, cut the excess. On this end, they have a little foam washer. Just helps keep dirt and debris out. So we'll slide that on there. All right, we're ready for the center link. You really can't hose up how you put this back on. The pitman arm goes in one end, idler arm in the other. The holes are different sizes, and the taper has a direction, of course. Best way to do this is get right in the middle. Slide it all the way to one end or the other here. Okay. Torque it down. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but these two holes right here where the factory bracket was, the instructions say to elongate this one, and that's so that these bolt heads it will fit in there and still sit flat on the thing. So I just rounded that out with a Dremel. But anyway, we can get this on here now. Get this hardware in here. Smaller hardware goes here. Just snug for now. They want these torqued to 45 and these torqued to 30. All right, now they want us to load the shock assembly in, and here's the shock assembly. And you do have to put this whole thing together, which is an entirely whole nother video unto itself. Okay, now they want these special curved spacers in here. Here's our upper control arm. That goes here. I'm not going to worry about any alignment shims in here right now because I don't even have an engine in the truck, so we'll worry with that later. We'll just snug these up. And they want those torqued to 70 foot-pounds. Lower control arm, once you have it all assembled, you want to make sure this, this front pin here is lined up. So all of this that you see on the lower control arm, the bump stop, the shock brackets, you have to assemble all of that before you put the lower control arm in. But we have it in, it's on the front dial, and the U-bolts are snug just so it won't move. So now we can uh, assemble it to the shock here. You have to put these little teeny spacers on each side. And to be honest, it's kind of a pain in the butt. There. Got it. So that's the upper and lower control arm and coil over shock assembly. Now we're ready for spindles and tie rods. Here's the spindle we're going to go with from Willwood. It's their Pro Spindle 2.50 drop. We should be able to set this on here. There we go. 
Castle Nut. We're going to put our new tie rod ends together, and I'm really going to blow your mind here. This is the inner tie rod, and it's a left-hand thread, and you need a left-hand jam nut. This is the outer tie rod end, and it's a right-hand thread, and you need a right-hand jam nut. And then your adjuster sleeve, Ride Tech says the end with the groove in it here, is the left-hand thread. So we need the left-hand stuff on the left, and the right hand stuff on the right. These tie rod adjuster sleeves have little peep holes in them so when I put them together I ran the threads in on each side right up to the peep hole. That way I knew I had the same amount of bite on each side. And then make sure you put you some anti-seize on here. That'll help with making the adjustment easier, turning easier, plus you won't go the threads up on your billet. Sticking with the QA1 setup here, this is their sway bar. It's a good beefy unit. We'll work on getting this in. First thing we have to do is remove these factory sway bar brackets. And of course they're, you know, riveted in. Take that one off, put this one on. So it's a sway bar setup, not complicated. Once you get the factory bracket out and you get this one in, then you got your sway bar bushing bracket, your sway bar bushing, make sure you put some grease in there and get the sway bar hung. But now we get to put together these sway bar end links. I don't know. Looks right to me. All right, so this, I guess, goes here. I think it needs just a little tap, tap a -roo. There we go. Thirty foot-pounds. All done. So these QA1 kits seem to be made of pretty good material. Directions were good. Everything went together really well. Fitment was awesome. One thing I will say is that some of the brackets came as bare metal. They were probably zinc coated for rust. I didn't really like the looks of that, so I spray painted them black. But I think that's going to wrap up this video. Front suspension and steering is done. But we still have brakes, wheels and tires, and a whole rear end to tackle. So do me a favor. Look right down there. There's a subscribe button. Go ahead and click that so you can keep up with the project. I'm going to have cookies. You go wrench on something. And thanks for watching Hammer's Garage.